Hey, what's going on, guys? Mindicute said to be here. Welcome back to another episode of NASCAR Thunder 2000. This is episode number 59 today for the 2001 Chevrolet Monte Carlo 400. And this is a very important race for us. As I will say before, I'll say this before, as we go down to the uh, awards section, which is this right here, the most important thing here, the Jackpot 5. However, we're not competing for the Jackpot 5 for this one. We didn't finish in the top five at uh, Richmond. Sorry, at Charlotte, I mean. So so we need to actually have a top five here in order to uh, start making money maybe at Talladega if we somehow win. Uh, so that's definitely what, what I look forward to that. So we need to do well here today to, to qualify for the uh, Talladega race. And, well, yeah, this is a bit overkill, don't you think? 15 poles out of the whole season. Do you think this is a bit overkill? So looks like we're going to have to put a power limiter on myself on this one. Um... We're probably only going to do one lap of qualifying from now on because uh, this is just a, a tiny bit overkill, don't you think? Like, you know, yeah. Mm. Anyway, we're 16th in the standings. I guess that's the most important part there. We got to start doing a little bit better with our stats. I mean, we have four wins, but that's our only top fives as well. We ended up finishing, uh, you know, six top tens at least. So there's something there. Um, an average start, though. Like, what is this? What is this average start? Can someone please explain to me what is this average start? Because I don't even know. But our average finish is still pretty lackluster. That's why we're 16th. Who's leading the points? Well, it's Jeff Byrne over Rusty Wallace this time around. Um, St Tony Stewart's also in the mix. Rudd's a ra full race back. Dale Earnhardt Sr. is nowhere to be found. Um, Jeff Gordon's still trying to make himself relevant in his career mode. I'm s still waiting for that. Um, we should probably go back to work on, on, on certain things since our stuff should be ready. R&D, we have, we're not going to do anything with the engine department because we're going to be waiting one more race for that, which is really nice. Really, 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 really nice. Um, so we might even just hold off on, on doing anything new, really, because we could just, I forget what we had, but we could just easily win the race with what we have, like, immediately, if we, if we really, really wanted to. But um, I'm going to say no to that. Maybe, but the, maybe the chassis, though, like, look at this. This is incredible. We could literally use our worst chassis and just win the race, I believe. But uh, we won't do that, though. We won't. Um, we're going to have to repair one of them. Um, I, I was only going to use this first chassis here as a bit of a... Uh, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at our options here. This goes up to 72-72 uh, on downforce and stuff. What about you? 73 to 74. But what about the repairing options here? What do we got? Yeah, I would have been better off just to repair this chassis, really. Mm. Yeah, it's not even worth the overhaul, so... Mm. We could just go another race with this right away and just not spend any money, really. Um, as far as the edge is concerned, then we're probably going to repair, just repair something at least. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll just spend a little bit of money on repairing it. But we're not going to do any chassis work. We're actually going to use one of our old... Uh, one of our old uh, chassis for this race. I'm pretty confident. We don't even have to use a brand new chassis for this. We don't even have to, I don't think. We're just going to use this this one down here because it still has a lot of downforce on it. Yeah, we'll just use that. Like, it, it's... It, I, I'm pretty confident we can just use that and, and just completely mop, mop, mop the floor here because Richmond, for some reason, is a very easy track. I'm not sure why. It just happens to be that way. Anyway, let's head to Richmond, and let's see. Only one lap of qualifying, by the way, we'll do. So let's see how we'll do from this point forward. Alrighty, so like I said, only one lap of qualifying. So what we see is what we get. So we're going to make this lap absolutely count here in order to actually start up, start up front here. As we as I say that, we completely wash turn one because we're absolutely washing this playthrough. I'm uh, going to go down to turn number three and four. Hopefully we don't wash this compl thing completely up the racetrack. We, do we don't. Instead, we just slide it all over like we're initial D. We went from dump truck to a, to a Torino. And what's the time going to be fifth place? Ugh. Not exactly what I wanted to see with the uh, Robert Presley getting the pole. Like, we just completely botched that qualifying effort. Absolutely botched it. So, uh, let's go try to get our, get that lead back as quick as we possibly can. Let's just see how we do in the race. MRN comes to Richmond, Virginia for tonight's race, the Chevy Monte Carlo 400. Richmond offers a little something for everyone, doesn't it, Barney? Well, Richmond is a short track with a wide surface. They can go a lot faster than it appears on this speedway. Look for a lot of passing and a ton of close calls. 
the Richmond International Raceway car has a remarkable qualifying average this year. Yeah, it is so difficult to get a feel for these short tracks. He really does an excellent job of going hard into the corners and coming off them just as quick. Johnny Benson will try for another top five finish in this one. And let me tell you something, Joe. You throw in a couple of wins to go along with those top fives, and all of a sudden you're in the hunt for the championship. Jeff Burton looks to continue his top five streak with a good finish here. He can sure gain a lot of points if he continues his top five streak. Just goes to show it doesn't always take wins to move up in the points. Okay, we have Robert Presley on pole. He's been doing really, really quite well in that Jazz from Motorsports 4 in, the, in terms of qualifying. We'll have to see how he goes and does in a race. We also have fellow Pennsylvania native Jimmy Spencer alongside. And we're going to have 100 laps here today at Richmond. And immediately, we're going to try to dive down to the inside. We're going to make a three wide to turn one like we're playing I racing or running the my Tuesday night league I race in anyway. Go three wide to turn one, and we actually make it stick. Thank, thankfully for that. I hope this is the right setup I'm using anyway, because I know in, in my initial practice was, like, I didn't save the uh, race-winning setup somehow, and um, it had, like, the very first initial bit of the setup where it was, uh, it was, like, 100% on the, on the suspensions. I'm like, okay, this was not good. It's fast, but it wasn't, like, great. Meanwhile, them two are, are pulling away from the entire field. Ricky Rudd trying to get, trying to make get his first win in the season anyway. I, don't, I mean, he's won a couple races last season, so he's definitely won this playthrough before. Um, he, he needs to get out of that little bit of, little bit of a slump. But meanwhile, we're trying to dive down the inside of our fellow, fellow Pennsylvania native. And we're going to make a little bit of contact. We barely lose the back end there. Robert Presley still leading the way. We, you know, we're, we have the Chev we're the Chevrolet Mo Monte Carlo 400, so we, well, yeah, Monte Carlo 400. This will be uh, the Looney Tunes era. Like this would be, this would have been the Looney Tunes race. Um, Got to make sure we get get the lead away from Robert Presley. We have to represent Chevrolet here today because, uh, well, we we completely destroyed the field last time, but now not so much with Robert Presley leading leading the way with Ricky with the rooster right behind me. Unfortunately for him, it's not morning yet. It's not even close to morning, so he can't wake us up. So, but he's gonna try to make sure make sure we wake, we wake up here as we run a nearly. A, near underneath 21 second lap as we rub the door a little bit on Robert Presley and we, and we uh, take the lead away. But we have Ricky Rudd right behind us immediately. We have to cut the door, shut the door off before uh, he goes, hits the inside wall. Hopefully, thankfully he did not do that. Yeah, st still really st running strong, Ricky Rudd is. He just, he just needs to have, get it, give himself a win and make, get his confidence back in the title hunt. But he really has to get through me first, which he is very determined to do so. You can see that already. So let's just see how it is this race pulled out. Uh-oh, we have a smoker already. I didn't even notice. It is the 36 of Ken Schrader. Oh, no. An early exit for him today in this race. A, rather, a bit of an unfortunate circumstance. That explains the uh, bit of the gap there on the, um, on the racetrack. I just happened to notice that there was a bit, there was a... There was a there was a bit of a gap there in the middle of the pack. Maybe that's what happened. Like he checked up the whole field somehow, like with that. And uh, yeah, that, that was very very interesting. The rooster is still on my tail. He's trying to try to sing cockle doodle do before anything else. But uh, of course, I lit the bottom of him just briefly, but I, I quickly shut the door back on him. Chad Little of all people is also up here too. Not sure how that's possible, but I'm sure sure there's a reasoning for everything. We're definitely not as dominant as we were before. In the previous Richard, R Richmond race, and R and Ricky Rudd takes the, takes the lead away. But for how long, though? We're gonna have to go, we're gonna have to try to try to get that back here. But he is just he, yeah. The leaders are getting away, but we're gonna get back down the inside. We're gonna give him a, a give the rooster a little bit of a tap, and we'll try to take the lead back. Give him a little bit of a, a little bit of a relatively shove there. And, we'll and, we, and we take the lead away again. Chad Little is still here, by the way. He's still there. I don't know what it is about Richmond, but he always seems to do somewhat, somewhat competent in that in this race, anyway. Specifically in Richmond. Not not sure what that's all about. Um, 
Yeah, this is not the same car as we had in a previous Richmond race. I mean, it could be the fact that there is a two point difference in the tire grip stat being 72 instead of 74 like we had in the spring. But uh, that, that, could be, that could be a difference anyway. It could also be the fact that this may or may not be the exact same setup. I try to make it as close as I can on the graphic there. The little, little graph that, that shows like what, you're, what changes and whatnot. Mm. Yeah, definitely not. A, I mean, we're fast. I mean, the car is fast, but so are they. Like, they they brought their stuff to the table, too. They know, like, Ricky Rudd is trying to be in the championship. Tony Swartz trying to be in the championship. Chad Little is out of nowhere. Robert Presley, unfortunately, is falling back a little bit after after qualifying on pole. But uh, that's just the way it is sometimes for him. You got you got a fast car in qualifying, but not so much in the race. I mean, that's the story of our playthrough, really. Like, we start up front almost every race, and... Uh, we just fall back to, 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 to a Midian. <laughs> it's just, that's just how it goes in, in this whole, in this playthrough sometimes. We're just still trying to hold off Ricky Rudd, but Tony Swartz also trying to join the party as well. All right, I think I knew what my problem was. I was off my groove. <laughs> we were, uh, uh, I think Ricky Rudd and Tony Swartz were, and Robert Presley, they were, they were messing with the Emperor's groove. You know what I'm saying? They were definitely messing with the groove and now I'm getting my groove back, thankfully in this track. I figured out how to drive Richmond again. We're okay. We passed, we put Daryl Waltrip a lap down. Now we're going to start putting all these other guys lap down and now we can just try to sit, sail away for the rest of the pack. I mean, that was probably what happened. I was off my groove because now my times are a lot faster too. I was driving pretty bad. Basically this whole entire time I was driving pretty bad, but now my groove's back. Like I know how to drive Richmond again. I didn't do that many practice laps. I was just confident. <laughs> uh, now, now, uh, I guess I, I had to be taken down the peg a little bit just to uh, get my humbleness back, and then there we were. <laughs> yeah, we're quarter of the way through now. We're just going to try to keep pulling away because we're pulled away from, from everyone. Our lap times are, are back are a lot better because I decided, oh, this is what I need to do here instead, instead of just doing like I normally do anyway and just try to uh, go hard. But, uh, th thankfully, uh, we built a bit of a gap now. I, well, Ricky Rudd's trying to fight back a little bit, but we built up a little bit of a gap, and now he's got to keep put these put these guys away. You just got to remember, Ricky Ricky Rudd has to go through this traffic as well. So what whatever I go through, he must go through as well. We got Stacy Cobb in front, and we got other Pennsylvania native Norm Benning, who we tried to help out in the Daytona race as well. Glad to see him make the field, Mr. Norm. He also made I think the Talladega race recently as well. I'm glad to see he's like he's. Norm is so old at this point, but yet he's still racing it, like trying to race in a truck series. Like that's mad respect there, really. I'm glad. I'm glad he was able to show up for Talladega anyway and just do so well. I think. I think he did pretty well for his for himself anyway, for his own sake. Unfortunately, it looks like he's getting a passed by Stacy Compton here, but fellow respect there for our fellow Pennsylvania native as well, Mr. Norm Benning, doing the best he can. Now we got Scott Pruitt in front of us up ahead, as well as Kyle Petty, everyone's favorite Kyle Petty. <laughs> Um, yeah, like now, now we're back in business. Now, like I said, I knew what my, my problem was. I thought I solved it. It's what I tried to, I used to do for a living, which is troubleshooting problems. <laughs> uh, unemployment's so fun, isn't it? Bill Elliott's been putting up quite a fight though for me to be, for me to be lapping it, but we're gonna finally put him a lap down here. I mean, that, that, that explains why he's awesome Bill from Dawsonville, because he passed like three to, he passed like, whoa, hold on a minute, hold on now. We lost the rear end just a little bit, so we're gonna hold off on the pass again, unless, unless he leaves the bottom like open like that for us. Thank you very much, sir. Like, that's why he's awesome Bill from Dawsonville. Anyway, <laughs> very, very, very nice, very nice to see him. He's like still somewhat being, at least a little bit competitive anyway. We, he passed like three or four cars before I put him a lap down, so he, he, was, doing, he was doing really well. Uh, next up is Jerry Nadeau up front, as well as the other Hendrick car, Terry Labonte. Is that Rusty Wallace up there, too? Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's bad, because Ricky Rudd and, and, uh, oh, yeah. and Tony Stewart's not too far behind, either. I think that's Rusty. Oh, the short track ace. Oh, that's not good. Oh, it's not good for him. Uh, we're going to put him a lap down at some point in this race, aren't we? Well, I think at this point, I'm, I'm going to try to stay on as long as I can. We kind of have free reign on what we can do, especially with the lap truck, lap cars being lap cars like getting in the way of the AI. So we can actually just stay as long as we can, and just you know, if a caution were to come out, we won't we won't get screwed. Is what I'm saying. So that's what I'll probably do. We'll go until the fuel tank it gets empty. Some people are already making their way down pit road. I don't blame them. But yeah, that's Rusty Wallace right in front of us. 
and our two teammates I see up there too. We see Joe, both Joe and uh, Kenny Wallace. So I guess they didn't want to take my advice on the setup anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I probably gave him the wrong one instead. Oops. Oh, a little bit of contact there between Joe and Mike Skinner because Joe is coming down pit road. Yeah, that's Rusty Wallace, a lap down. Going to be a lap down, I should say, pretty soon. That's that, He has to hope and pray. Team Penske did not deliver today on the car, it seemed. I don't even know how far ahead I am to the others now at this point. As long as nothing stupid happens to us, we should be okay. But yeah, he's passing some people now. He's, he's ready to pass his, his other, his brother Kenny as well, our teammate, per, per position. We're gonna try to pass Scary Terry, hold on to it now, as as Ken is really nearly Kenzie's in the back. Thankfully, uh, Kenny Wall is what will try to let us go anyway. We're gonna have the inside of him, our teammate. In the, in the 55 car, we're gonna we're gonna pass him, and away we go. But yeah, Rusty Wall is definitely determined to not go fall a lap down here. He, he does not want to fall a lap down here. He is driving on uh, what he has left. We're we're going to the very end of the of the fuel run though. That's exactly what we're doing. Yeah, pit road is definitely busy B now. So I'm still staying out. I'm still staying out. It's too congested to get in there at the moment. Definitely too congested. We're staying out as long as possible. Just in case of a caution were to come out, we'll put so many people a lap down. But I don't think the wave around exists in this game, I don't think. Yeah, but next up is Wally Dollin back. I'm, I'm, I think, is this the first time I'm lapping Wally, Wally this race? I, I don't remember. I, th I think I might have passed it before. I don't know. But yeah, we got to come on in like uh, probably next lap or so we'll have to come on in oh i uh, see that was what i was fearing like a little bit of pit, pit road incidents as well i was fearing for fearing that yeah we're gonna have to come on in uh this lap here pit road's not as congested all right box 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 going into the pits this time right here all right brilliant stuff 16.6 .6 pit stop. I expect a little bit better than that. We shall see, though. So we do take the we did not we did take, we take the lead only for a little bit as we're getting held up on pit road a little bit. That's not great. Oh, we're gonna get held up a little bit more. No, we're not good. So that was a little bit of a kerfuffle there. We cannot mess this pit stop up, guys. And we do so anyway. I don't know who to blame for that. But not a good not a good look. We had, we, we, we ended up being uh, coming out P6. Whoa, hold on to it now as we're as we're back on the racetrack now behind our teammate and behind Rick Ward Burton as well. Not everyone's come down pit road yet, so we'll have to wait for the final five people to come on in. So it's only Tony Stewart and Kyle Petty still out, still out on the racetrack. Kyle's trying to take a lap or so away, but Tony Stewart's not letting anybody have it. He's going 60 laps. What if his what is his fuel economy? Honest to goodness, we're we're, we're full lap behind and we're gaining on him a, quite a bit in terms of the tires anyway. He doesn't want to get held up too much though. That's the thing. With the with the uh, he doesn't want to get um, stay out too long because you know he'll have the freshest tires out of everybody. Yes, but. You know he'll have to deal with the, the amount of traffic that he have to he have to pass. So that's something that that thing like, hit both him and Kyle Ward. What are you doing, my guy? I don't appreciate what you're doing there. You're interrupting my groove. You're you're, you're, you're throwing off my groove. Also, we have a sub 21 se second lap time. Tony Stewart finally comes on in. Tony Stewart finally comes in. 64 laps. He, he did. 64. My goodness. I didn't know he would he'd be able to do make it that long on fuel. That's incredible. 64 laps. So he'll have the freshest tires. Um, Kyle Petty is just up ahead. Up up ahead, actually, it seems, according to the graphic, but. Well, he's somewhere up here anyway. He'll have to come on down too. So it's just it's so right now I would cycle out P1. We, we just have to wait for Kyle to come on in. You know, actually, for it to do so. Yep, so there's Kyle Petty now. He's, as, I don't know what Bill Elliott was doing there. He just 
he thought there was something shiny against the wall, wanted to grab it. But Kyle Petty has to come on in. And uh, we'll, 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 we'll take the pit stop, take the lead away, and he does. He's on his way in. Well, he's got a five bonus points, I think. Meanwhile, we just keep we just keep we just keep doing what we're doing. We're gonna sight see where uh, Tony Short cycles out in about a few laps. We got some more bonus points in our way. Nice. We led the most laps as well. So we so we can get ourselves a max points day and try to get, gain a little, little bit on our nearest competitors anyway. I mean, five wins on the year like that, that would be insane if that's the, if we can finish, if we can just pull this off. Like that would be that would be great. Um. All right. Let's see here. What, what are we looking like? So Rudd, does, Rudd takes at second. Chad's still in fifth. Labonte fourth. Rudd's still in second. Presley's still having a great day in, uh, in sixth place. Benson seventh. Earnhardt eighth. Our fellow Pennsylvania native rounds out the top ten. Very nice to see. So yeah, it looks like, it looks like uh, Stewart, might, Stewart might be very close to the point lead at this point, depending on where Jeff Burton finishes. But, but Rusty Wallace, not a good day. Not a good day for the Blue Deuce. I haven't seen him anyway in, in the group graphic, or at least I wasn't paying attention. But uh, we're about to hit lap nice of, of this race anyway. And yeah, we're just we're just still pulling away from the entire field. Wait, where? Wait, I passed Bobby Hamilton already. Where is he? Where is he at actually? What position is he in? All right, so he's falling to twenty third. So I kind of like what I expected really. We have another smoker down down below. This time it's Dave Bl Young, Dave Blaney. He's having a bit of an awful season as well in that 93 Amico Pontiac. But, oh no, there's Rusty again. Oh no, he's still being held up in traffic. Oh no, this is not a good, this is not a good race for him at all. Tony might finish second, and he won't be able to get, he won't be able to gain any points on him really, so Rusty Wallace is going to go down a lap down, probably either the second time or the first one. We'll, we'll, have, to see, we'll have to see once I do lap him, well not now, but Okay, we're directly on his bumper, and we do end up lapping him. Um, okay. So is that his second lap down? Or is that his first? Because I know I put him a lap down before. Would this be his second? Oh, wow. Oh, no. Wait. Did I, I must have passed him. Yeah, I must have passed him. All right. Great work, Nick. Great work. So, yeah, he would be a lap down. Okay, so he did get the lap back at some point there. See, that, yeah, I must have lost a lot of time on pit road or something, because I thought, sure, I, I mean, he, he gained a lot back on me because he drove around the racetrack, but... <laughs> but goddamn, man, Russia is not having a great day at all. We have gotten to the point now where we're lapping our sponsorship object objective with Steve Park. We're coming to about 20 laps to go in this race. Still walk, still walk, you know... <laughs> um, not even stopping to smell the flow, fl the flowers. Flowers, anyway. We're just continuing, continuing on, keeping on the entirety of this race. We see our other, we see our Pennsylvania native once again, Norm Benning, about to be putting yet another lap down. It looks like, unfortunately. So we, we will, we will lap him at, at some point. Mark Martin's also, I mean, unfortunately for Mark, I mean, ever since that day 20 to 500 win in the first episode, he hasn't been there at all. It's kind of sad, really. But we're gonna go three wide down the inside. You try to use a uh, Norm as a pick. To uh, slow down Mark Martin and try to put him up, try to put him a lap down, which we which we eventually do with a little bit of a brotherly shove. Jeff Burton is also going to go a lap down too. We see our other Pennsylvania native as well, Jimmy Spencer, up up ahead as well. How many laps? Are, how many cars have we put a lap down to so far? I have no idea. I've lost count uh, as well. It just took it only took me it just took me this long to get my groove going, like 30 like 20 20 some laps into, into the run there. <laughs> I probably should. I hopefully it won't, that won't happen again, but. Yeah, we need this race. We absolutely, we need, we need this race for sure. We didn't finish in the top five at Charlotte, so we're just trying to finish in the top five here to be qualified for the uh, jackpot five for Talladega, which we, which we need to absolutely win. And it'll probably get our our sixth win of the season at Talladega, probably if we do. There's gonna be a pr brand new rules package though for 2002, so I have to wait and see what that what that is. Yeah, see what NASCAR has has in store for the uh, regulation change. Uh, we're actually finally got about to lap Chad Little as well, and our pole sitter Robert Presley. Having both of them are having very great runs today. Of course, we see our man Johnny Benson up here too. We have Rick Mast. We have Sterling Marlin as well. 
I don't, I don't even know how many cars I put a lap down at this point, but I know it's quite a bit. I would say we got we got Johnny Benson up ahead, so that's how you know we're getting close. Either that to the top ten, or we are lapping up to the top ten anyway. Of course, NASCAR fans today would say this race would be boring. I mean, I would agree. I would agree to be honest a little bit, but if there's passing everywhere. I mean, that's fine. It's just not. Oh, it's just not for the lead. Oh well. I mean, you got Sterling Marlin up ahead running the uh, Silver Bullet scheme. It looks really nice anyway. I like that a lot. We've got about 11 laps to go. Our tires are warm, but who really cares? This is basically going to be our last uh, bit of traffic here before we, I think, we sign off for now. As soon as we get around Ricky Craven, who's also in this race today, the 50 car. Like that, like that'll be, that looks like that'll be it. Getting around on Sterling here first. Let's see how we do. We have 10 laps to go this time by. I think we have this race in the bag, essentially. To add a little bit more insult to injury, where we had, we have Dale Earnhardt Sr. We're putting him a lap down too. It seems we got Kenny Wal Kenny Irwin Jr. also being in the way a little bit as well. Coming to two laps to go this time by this race has just been, yeah. We lapped up to the, up to the fifth position. There are four cars on the lead lap. Only four on the lead lap. That's how fast this car is. Incredible stuff here today by the whole team, the whole crew ourselves for figuring out the track 20 some laps in white flag around one more time around spons sponsored or may or may not be by credit one bank who knows i'll let you be the judge we got we're ready to lap our teammate once again we're probably going to put him out of his misery of doing another lap here <laughs> i don't think i don't think andy petrie uh okay we're gonna let him go we're gonna let him suffer for another lap it seems but we're gonna come home today to sweet richmond we are so freaking good at this. <laughs> Second is nowhere to be seen. We're going to go shift the first first gear, of course. Got to make sure we do that. And now we do our celebration. There we go. Right on the Sledge logo. Now we do, now we do it on the Richmond logo. What a race, what a win. Oh, that felt good. The yellow flag didn't fly at all in this one. You know, that's pretty amazing. It says a lot about the quality and true talent of these NASCAR Winston Cup drivers. And the 56 car got the win with an impressive margin of victory. He worked hard to build that cushion on his lead. It pays off when you cross the finish line all by yourself. Well, it was a great night of racing. And until the next time, this is MRN Radio and EA Sports. Good night. Hell yeah, boys. We did it. Sweeping Richmond. This will be our fifth win of the season. Ugh. <laughs> we swept all the plate races so far. And we just got, you know, swept Richmond as well. It seems like we were only a super speedway guy, except for like Richmond for some reason. the road courses these guys drive like animals but we're the one that drove like an animal today and that's what matters with the victory here today for the fifth time this season we get to sing ode to joy you know our little victory theme at this point well we just saw the top 10 there we led an astonishing 85 laps so it's not even as dominant as the previous race but uh, after having a little bit of a slip up there, Ricky Rudd le le leads a lap. Uh, Tony Sertlitz leads 10 laps. So it's not great for... Uh, well, Earnhardt Jr. for six. That's nice. I didn't even notice. Senior, uh, like, only four cars finished on the lead lap. Only four. And the margin of victory was 12 seconds. Jesus Christ. We'll have to do a lap the field challenge so at some point, it seems. <laughs> Maybe when our car gets like super over the top powerful, that's when we'll do the uh, lap the field challenge. Because we really, we lap up the fourth. That's incredible. So, and yep, even Chad Little gets a top 10, like a legit top 10. 
Like, this, I have to say, like, I'm impressed. Absolutely, I'm impressed. Unfortunately, I can't say the same of our poll center, Robert Presley. He was there until he wasn't. Rusty Wallace manages to climb. Oh, we had to start from 39th. Oh, that, that'll do it. And finish, finishes in 14th. So at least there's something there for that. He can salvage something. But, man, he's going to be far behind, isn't he? Our teammates didn't do very well. We have a couple people that, that DNF'd as well. Uh, Dave Blady and Ken Schrader. So that's a bit unfortunate there. Now we have money to play with for the R&D Center. Now we do. Now we do. We can build ourselves another engine, too, while we're at it in the next episode. But New Hampshire is not exactly a great track that I look forward to. Um, we're still, believe it or not, still only 16th in the standings. We're, we're really behind, just close behind our other teammate, Joe Dimacek, now. Hopefully our, hopefully our season can be a little bit more consistent than what we have here. We're definitely keeping our seat now. Like, we have, we're like three full races ahead at this point. Kenny Wallace, though. Not looking great. Only 21st in the standings. He's not doing very as well as I hoped he would be doing anyway. But yeah, Jeff Burton now has a 34-point lead over to, over Tony Stewart. Stewart's trying to go back to back with his late late season charge. Rusty Wallace is 44 back, trying to look for his second title. We didn't even we didn't even get the fast pace award. That's a, that's annoying. Ah, uh, that's that's a sh that's a shame. Obviously, no winner for the Richmond race for. Um, the uh, jackpot five because we were not a part of it for Charlotte, so we, that's why we didn't win. But we're a part of it for Talladega. That's that's what actually matters. We have to actually win that race. So that'll be all for this episode. Pure domination after a few laps, isn't it? Feels great to win one of these things again. So if you liked the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. It helps on the channel quite a bit. We're almost at 700 subs, so let's keep that keep those numbers going. Yeah, uh, and we'll see you guys in the next one at New Hampshire.